I hope that you are well. And I also hope that you are having a good day so far. So for today, we will be doing our grade seven English lesson on subject verb agreement. So we'll be doing our English grade seven lesson on subject verb agreement. And before we start with our lesson, you're going to log into aplusstudents.ca and you're going to log in with your username as well as your password. And then you're going to select the subject of language arts, grade seven, because we're doing grade seven. All right, so once we have selected the subject of language arts, and then you're going to scroll down <clears throat> the chapters up until we get to the chapter of subject verb agreement. Subject verb agreement. So up until we get to subject verb agreement. So you're going to then click on the chapter of subject verb agreement. And once we are, we've um, selected the subject of subject verb agreement, the chapter of subject verb agreement, our focus lessons are going to be to correct errors with subject verb agreement, to correct errors with indefinite pronoun verb agreement, and to use the correct verb with compound subject. And our sub our chapter is subject verb agreement. And the focus lessons or where we'll be getting our lessons from is on the a plus students.ca page. So we will basically be working from a plus students.ca. So if you want to go back to refresh, then you can go on a plus students.ca, go to the chapter of subject verb agreement, and then you can go into any other lessons if you want to redo it. All right, so now when it comes to subject verb agreement, right? Using singular verbs. So when we use singular verbs, right? With singular nouns and singular plurals with singular, with basically plural nouns, right? So the subject verb agreement, the subject refers to who or what is doing something, right? And the verb is, of course, the action that the subject is doing. And when it comes to subject-verb agreement, the subject as well as the verb, they need to work together in order to come to some form of agreement. So they need to work together and in order for them also to agree, right? So also with subject verb agreement, right? Here we have an example that says that the cat meows when he is hungry, which means that if the subject is singular, so if the subject is singular, like referring to one either person or animal or thing, right? If we refer to it being singular or one, and then our verb is going to is going to end in s, right? Or we're going to add an s to our verb. And when our subject is plural, right? When the subject is plural, and then we will not add the s to our verb. 
And here we have an example of that. Let's say that the cat meows when he is hungry. So cat meaning one cat, singular, right? But meows, we added an S when he is hungry. Or we can say the cats, more than one cat, meow, no S when they are hungry. The same with another, here's another example. Mike plays the guitar. Mike being singular, alone, right? He plays, we added an S, the guitar. And then we have my friends, which is more than one friend. So my friends play the guitar, right? So play friends, which is plural, they play and we do not add the S, they play the guitar. All right, so now we're going to our tutorial page, right? Where we are going to um, find out more about subject verb agreements as well as specific examples. And then we are also going to do our follow-up tests. So we're going into the first lesson that is correct errors with subject verb agreement. All right, so we need to basically find errors, right, with subject verb agreements. And when a, when a subject, right, is singular, which we mentioned earlier, if a subject is singular, we use a singular verb, right? Which means that if we use singular verbs, then the singular verbs usually ends in S or we add an S, right? So basically the singular verbs, they add, they end in an S, with an S or end in S. For example, Sarah visits her grandmother. So Sarah being singular, being alone, she visits, right, where our verb ends in an S, her grandmother. Brian, which is singular, teaches art history. Teaches, right, where the verb basically ends in an S, art history. So that is basically when the subject is singular, we use a singular verb, right? And with the singular verb, we usually, or it usually ends in S. Then also when a subject is plural, which means it is more than, right? More than two. So when the subject is plural, we use the plural verb. And when we use the plural verb, we do not add the S, do not end in S. So plural verbs do not end in S. And examples of this is Jesse, Kyle and Jesse walk home. So Kyle and Jesse walk home, meaning that it is more than one person that is walking together, right? So we don't say Kyle and Jesse walks home, no, right? We do not, like our verb or our plural verb does not end or usually does not end in an S, right? It, it is without the S. So Kyle and Jesse walk home. Those brownies, referring to more than one brownie, so those brownies smell delicious. So those brownies smell delicious, right? So brownies, more than one. So they smell, we don't say it smells delicious, right? We just say it smells delicious. So our plural verb usually do not end in an S. So when the subject is singular, we use a singular verb. 
and it ends with an S. And when the subject is plural, we use a plural verb, right? And it do not end in S. And also subject verb agreements, right, is usually determined by the simple subject. The subject, right? And remember that the simple subject and the verb aren't always adjacent. And here we have an example, right, or a few examples of the subject verb agreement, right? Specifically, the, the simple subject. The excitement of the fans is palpable. So the excitement of the fans is palpable. So our simple <clears throat> subject is the excitement of the fans, right? which is palpable. So is, is our verb. The violinists who perform the duet work together quite often. So the violinists who perform the duet work together quite often. All right, <clears throat> so the violinists refers to more than one who performed the duet, meaning they've performed it together, work without the S, together quite often. And then of course we say that some sentences are inverted. Right, meaning that the subject follows the verb. So our subject will follow the verb. So some of the sentences are inverted and the subject follows the verb. And the original for example, right, the original sentence. The original sentence would be, your blueberry pancakes are yeah. So your blueberry pancakes are yeah. But our inverted, our inverted sentence, for example, would be yeah are your blueberry pancakes so your blueberry pancakes are yeah or we can say yeah are your blueberry pancakes so when it comes to subject verb agreement Remember that also the subject as well as the verb, they need to work together in order to agree, right? So they're not always adjacent, but they need to work together in order to agree. All right. <clears throat> so if we look at our specific sentence, right, that says nutrient Nutrient-rich vegetables, including beet, greens, watercress, and chard, help reduce the risk of chronic diseases. Right? So they are helping the risk of chronic diseases. So now they're saying, the question says, we need to find the error with the subject verb agreement and correct it, incorrect the verb and type it correctly. 
correctly. So we see that nutrients, nutrient-rich vegetables, including beetroot, watercress, and chard, help reduce the risk of chronic diseases. So if we correct it, right, if we decide to correct it or we, we correct it, then we say that the verb helps is incorrect, right? And its subject is nutrient-rich vegetables. So in this case, the subject is nutrient-rich vegetables, which is plural, right? So the verb should be help. So we don't say helps to reduce, we say help to reduce chronic or risk of chronic diseases. So there are several, there are several baseball franchises including the Chicago Cubs and the St. Louis Cardinals that date back to 1870s and 1880s. <laughs> so there are several baseball franchise, franchises, including the Chicago Cubs and the St. Louis Cardinals that date back to the 1870s and 1880s. So we need to correct it, but also we need to show where the subject verb is. And our subject is several baseball franchises. So our subject is several baseball franchises. And several baseball franchises, it is plural. It is plural. Mm -mm -mm. So also, since this since the subject is plural, right? Because several Baseball franchises, franchises meaning more than one franchise, is plural, right? We're not going to say is, um, for example, is there is several baseball franchises. So we don't say there is several base, um, baseball franchises. We need to say there are several baseball franchises. Are, because are It basically shows that it is a plural form. Are not is. Is refers to when something is singular, not plural. Right, so here we <clears throat> identified the subject. All right, yeah, drought conditions in an agricultural area often impacts food production. For example, during a dry spell in 2014, stockpiles of corn in the United States decreased 48% between March and June. If we were to correct this by also identifying the subject by also identifying the subject, right? Then we change impacts food production to it impact. Because the subject within that sentence, right, is drought conditions in an agricultural area. Conditions, which means that it is plural. So we need to say it impact food production, not impacts food production. 
All right. So now we're going on to our test. All right, so we need to find the errors. So we need to find the errors with subject verb agreement, right? So we are going to select the incorrect verb and then we're going to type it correctly. So the students elected to lead our school beautification committee have several inspiring ideas including a mural in the gym and the relocation of the garbage cans from near the school entrance to behind the cafeteria. Or we have another option, which is the students elected to lead school beautif to lead our school beautif beautification committee has several inspiring ideas, including a mural in the gym and the relocation of the garbage cans from near the school entrance to behind the cafeteria. It's basically the same. So we need to basically find the error with the subject verb agreement. Oh, so we have to, so yeah, we either have to find the correct one is either have or has several inspiring ideas or have several um, inspiring ideas. So we need to find the error with the subject verb agreement. All right. So if we find the subject verb agreement, right, so we must either say that they have, committee have several inspiring ideas or has several inspiring ideas. So we can say that they have, including not. So they have, have is the one, several inspiring ideas. We need to find the error with subject verb agreement and then select the incorrect verb and type it correctly. The rainbow lorry kit, a parrot found in the Solomon Islands, are named of the ray of the air of the array of colors found on its feathers. Or the rainbow loriket, a parrot, a parrot found in the Solomon Islands, is named for the area of colors found on its feathers. So basically, we they found a parrot, right, in the Solomon Islands. So if they found a a one basically just one parrot, then we can say he is named, is referring to one person, is named. R means that we have found more than one. Erica's favorite hiking trail winds from the base of Mount D Diablo up to the summit, which offers breathtaking views of the surrounding area. Or Erica's favorite hiking trail, wind from the base of Mount Diablo up to the subject, up to the summit, which offers breathtaking views of the surrounding area. So we either need to choose winds from the base or wind from the base. So Erica's 
favorite hiking trail. Remember, we said that if the verb, if the subject is singular, then the verb needs to also be singular, right? So if the subject is singular, then the verb needs to end in s. And if our subject is plural, then we don't have to add the s at all. So in this case, it is Erica's favorite hiking trail. So we will say winds, winds, double s, from the base of Mount Diablo up to the summit. All right. So now we're going on to the next one, which is to correct errors with indefinite pronoun verb agreement. And when we use a singular verb for most indefinite pronouns, right, which includes each, neither, one, everyone, everybody, everything, anyone, anybody, anything, someone, somebody, something, no one, nobody, and nothing, right? So when we use a singular verb for most indefinite pronouns, we need to include, including one of these, right? So everyone generally leaves the office around six o'clock. So everyone generally leaves the office around six o'clock, everyone. They leave or leaves the office around six o'clock. And then nothing in this kitchen works properly. And as we can see that we basically add an S, right, to our verb. So basically the subject and the verb in a sentence or clause must agree in number. So they must agree in number. And we need to use a plural verb for the indefinite pronouns, which is both, few, many, others, and several. So if we mention words like both, few, many, others, and several, then it means that we need to use a plural verb because these are indefinite pronouns. And examples of that is, I have tried many red velvet cupcakes, but few taste as delicious as Kathy's. And then these plums are almost ripe. In fact, several look ready to eat now. So when we use words like few and several, we do not add an S to, to our verb. But if we use indefinite pronouns, then like for example, like everyone and nothing, and then we add an S to the Verb. So when it comes to indefinite pronouns, right? So when it comes to indefinite pronouns, some indefinite pronouns like all, any, most, none, and some can go with singular or plural verbs. So words like all, any, most, none, and some can go with singular or plural verbs. But it depends on what the pronoun refers to. I own several winter coats, but none fit quite right. Not fits quite right, fit quite right. Right. And in this case, the pronoun refers to the plural noun coats. So 
So coats, they fit. Water generally fills the creek from October to April. But by June or July, almost none is left. And the pronoun refers here to a singular noun, which is water. And remember, we still follow the rules of if your subject is singular, then the verb needs to be in a singular form where we add an S. And if it's plural, then you do not need to add an S. All right, so now we're going to look at a little activity, right? That says, Martha's cat is quite skittish. Whenever something startles him, he runs and hides under her bed. So Martha's cat is quite skittish. Whenever something startles him, he runs and hides under her bed. So since Martha's, we're talking about Martha's cat, which is singular, right? We use the word startles him. So startles, we added the S. So he runs and hides under her bed, right? So something, whenever something startles him. So something is also a singular indefinite pronoun. Millions of devices in our homes like cable, TV boxes, microphones, microwaves and computers continue to consume energy while we sleep. Most use more electricity than necessary, than necessary and could be designed to be more energy efficient. So millions of devices in our homes like TV boxes, microwaves <clears throat> and computers, they continue to consume energy while we sleep and most use more electricity than necessary and could be designed to be more energy efficient. So since, so since our subject is basically most, right? So we say most use. So we don't say most uses. We say most use. Because it's most people. They use more electricity than necessary. And then when it comes to the word devices. Devices is more than one. So basically, our subject is use. Our subject needs to be used because most refers to it is a plural form. All right. So cables, TV boxes, microwave, computers, those are all forms of devices. Right? It is the forms of D. Devices of so millions of devices, right? Devices, more than one, they use, not uses, we say they use or consume a lot of electricity. All right, let's go to our test. 
So we're going to have to now find the error with subject verb agreement, right? And we're going to have to select the incorrect verb and then type it correctly. Since no one ever uses the public payphone, at first and main, the city is going to remove it. So since no one ever uses the public payphone at first and main, the city is going to remove it. Or is it since no one ever uses the public payphone, since no one use the public payphone at first and main, the city is going to remove it. So we either need to change, um, basically select the, the subject verb with either uses the public payphone or use no one. since no one use so we can say since no one uses the payphone uses no one then at the annual Cedarburg Falcons family day everyone in attendance receive a small flag with the team logo and the first 20 attendees receive a team backpack or is it at the annual Cedarburg Falcons Family Day? Everyone in attendance receives a small bag, a small flag with the team logo, and the first 20 attendees receive a team backpack. So everyone in attendance receives. Everyone receive. All right. So in this case, right, when we say everyone, then we need to say receives, right? So if you get an answer incorrect, right, because remember, it can be very tricky at times, right? So if you get an answer incorrect, then what you can do is you go and look for the correct answer, copy the link, and then send it to us and you'll be able to get 100 bonus points. All right, got it. Call and response is a technique is a technique that musicians use with each other or with the audience, audience that is call and response. A, music, <clears throat> a musician calls out a phrase or a sound, and then everyone responds by repeating it. Or call and response is a technique that musicians use with each other or with the audience. A musician calls out a phrase or a sound, and then everyone responds by, by, by repeating it. So everyone respond or everyone responds by repeating it. Call and response is a technique. <laughs> All right. So if we select the correct one, right, we, we need to find the error with the subject verb agreement and we need to find the incorrect verb, right? Then we can say the call and response is then the subject, right? So we can say where everybody responds by repeating it. They responds. All right. So that is basically when it comes to subject, verb, agreement, and indefinite pronoun verb agreement. So now, lastly, before we end off, we are going to use 
we're going to use the correct verb with the compound subject, right? And a compound subject is made up of two subjects that, are, that is joined by a conjunction, which is and, or, or no, right? So a compound subject is made up of two subjects that is joined by the conjunction, which is and, or, or no. For example, Mark and Amanda, this week, or next week, neither John nor my friends, right? So when a compound subject is joined by and, we use the plural verb, right? And plural verbs, they usually do not end in S, E, S, or I, E, S. So where do Mark and Amanda go to school? Right? Not where does. Where do they go to school? That is when we use and, then we use the plural verb. And when a compound subject is joined by or or nor, then we use a verb that agrees with the subject. So when a compound subject is joined by or or nor, <clears throat> we use a verb that agrees with the subject that is closest to the verb. And if the subject closest to the verb is singular, then we use a singular verb, right? And remember what singular verbs, we it ends with S, E, S, or it ends with I, E, S. So next week, this week or next week seems likely to be hectic. So we say seems, not seem, seems likely to be hectic. And in this case, if the subject is closest to the verb, is plural, we use the plural verb. Again, plural verbs usually do not end in S, E, S, or I, E, S. So after reading reviews, an example, after reading the reviews, neither Josh nor my friends expect the movie to be successful. So it's like none of them, basically. And if we look at the subject, right? <clears throat> Remember, we said that the two subject, it is joined, a compound subject is joined or made up by two subjects that are joined together by a conjunction. So now let's complete the sentence with the best verb. The award-winning author and its editor. We need to say speak or speaks to audiences of writers and students every week. So the award winner, winning author and his editor, right? We then say, this is author and editor, meaning that it is plural. Because remember we said that when the compound subject is joined by and, we use a plural verb, right? Where we do not add an S. So we then say, speak, speak to audience. So this is speak to audiences of writers and students every week. And then the photographer and story in today's paper perfectly, perfectly capture the spirit of our town. So the photographer and story in today's paper perfectly capture no no is at all it capture 
the spirit of our town. All right, so we are basically just going to stop there, right? So this is the use of the verb with the compound subject, right? And even with compound subjects, or when it comes to subject verb agreement, right? Singular subjects have singular, um, basically like a singular verb, right? With a singular subject, our verb, basically we add an S. And if we have a plural subject, then we do not add an S, or it most likely does not end in an S, right? And then it the same um, applies when we have a compound subject. So this is now the end of our lesson when it comes to subject verb agreement. And remember the subject is who or what, you know, is doing the action and the verb is the action that is being done. And the subject as well as the verb, they need to work together in order to be in agreement, right? So this is the end of our lessons, grade seven. You should have an amazing evening further.